This is the new Audi A3 Cabriolet. It's bigger than the old model, faster and more fuel efficient. Sounds good. Let's take a closer look at those changes and see how it compares to its hatchback counterpart. The redesigned body looks neat and tidy with a sporty edge to it. Although the side profile is very similar, the rear end is much more attractive with its longer bodywork and distinctive boot ledge. Talking of which, it's bigger than before, and that's thanks to its larger dimensions. And this model is fitted with split folding rear seats for added practicality. But what we really want to see is how much space there is with the roof down. Plus, I'm in a bit of a posing mood. I mean, it's sunny and we need to make the most out of it. The great thing about this car is that it takes just 18 seconds to put the roof down and you could do it at speeds of up to 31 miles per hour, which is really handy with the constantly changing British weather. Sometimes we struggle to keep our five minute videos in the same weather conditions because it alters so much. Now you can see, although it has eaten into a bit of the space, there is still a decent sized area for this huge bag and a small one with room to spare. An Audi interior is a pleasant place to be. The chrome detailing just adds a touch of class and it feels high quality as expected with plenty of soft touch materials. Storage is also very good because we've got decent sized door bins, two cup holders, central stowage and dried fruit and bananas can go in the glove box. Now, despite this car yielding a premium badge, Audi hasn't been stingy on the spec. Even the entry-level model comes with leather-bound steering wheel, air conditioning, DAB digital radio, and an eight-speaker sound system. The one we're in today, however, has the Bang & Olsen system. And I'm telling you, it's banging. Even with the roof down, the sound is sensational. But I won't demonstrate that because you might not agree with my music tastes. Instead, We'll get comfortable for driving, which is easily done, and see how it drives. Firstly, the choice of engines is between a 1.4 litre petrol, which returns 56.5 miles to the gallon and emits 114 grams per kilometre of CO2, and it does feel rather nippy. The 1.8 litre petrol is a little bit quicker and it returns high 40s and emits 133 grams per kilometre of CO2. If it's all out fuel economy that you're after, go for the frugal 1.6 litre diesel because that returns 72.5 four miles to the gallon and emits just 104 grams per kilometer of CO2. There's also a two litre diesel and all of them are improved over the outgoing model because the car is so much lighter. Lighter also means faster because there's less weight for the engines to pull along. For the real speed freaks out there, there's the S3 Cabriolet because that gets to 60 in just 5.4 seconds. Enough of facts and figures, another glowing quality of this car is its safety credentials. Although this particular model hasn't been tested, the hatchback on which it was based was awarded the full five stars in the Euro NCAP crash safety tests and comes with plenty of airbags and a piece of technology that stops the car rolling after a collision. Not only that, despite having a folding roof, talking of which, I think we should put it back up now. It has a refined cabin that does an excellent job of keeping wind noise at bay. Plus, you can opt for an even better insulated acoustic roof, making it just as quiet as the hatchback version. A downside to having a convertible roof, though, does mean there is a bit of flex in the body. Which means it's not quite as fun to drive as the hatchback. Now the roof is up, I can take my hair back down. Anyway, we've already established it's not slow, but it's just not quite as good fun as, say, a BMW 4 Series convertible or even a Mini convertible. It's also rather pricey. I mean, you can get an entry-level Porsche Boxster for only a little bit more than a top-spec A3 Cabriolet. I know it's unfair to compare different spec levels, but it does put it into perspective.
Okay, admittedly, you don't get these rear seats in the Porsche. But unless you're small, you may find them a bit cramped because headroom isn't brilliant. And if you're sat behind the person that was sitting in this seat, legroom is virtually non-existent. Having said that, lots of cars in this sector have the same issue. With its improved styling, being faster, better on fuel, and having a great choice of engines, it could just sway you. But before you make up your mind, why not check out its competition? Watch the Volkswagen Golf Cabriolet video here, the Vauxhall Cascada video here, watch our latest video here, and don't forget to subscribe to our Car Buyer channel by clicking here.